What's up everybody, I'm Matt Moran and this is the all new 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the differences here between the Grand Wagoneer and the regular Wagoneer because although they share a lot, there's also a lot of differences here. So I'm gonna walk you through all those so you can decide if it's worth the extra money for the Grand Wagoneer. I'm also going to you know, take it out on the road and show you what it's like to drive compared to the Wagoneer, which I just drove last week. And uh, also talk about how it compares to its competitors. And in the Grand Wagoneer's case, we're talking about the Cadillac Escalade Lincoln Navigator, very prestigious vehicles that have been around for a long time, and so we'll see how the Grand Wagoneer stacks up. So up front here, uh, the couple little unique things here for the Grand Wagoneer that you'll probably notice are that you'll just generally have a little bit more bling here. So you'll see that the grille is a lot more blingy, but strangely, it still just says only Wagoneer there. It doesn't say Grand Wagoneer. So when you walk up to this, you might say, oh, it's a Wagoneer. But actual regular Wagoneers have Wagoneer spelled out on the edge of the hood here. So the Grand Wagoneer has it in the grille. You also get the little bit of like a diamond studded look to the grille. You get a simpler grille on a regular Wagoneer. You also get unique headlights. You get these headlights that look a lot more exciting, a lot more uh, high tech, I guess, a little bit darker too compared to the headlights you get on the regular Wagoneer, which look a little bit more like a Grand Cherokee or something. These are a little bit sharper. You also get a sequential turn signal in these that you don't get in the regular Wagoneer. So those are the main two things um, because like all the satin trim here for the tow hooks and stuff, you can get all that kind of stuff on a regular Wagoneer as well. So, um, you know, from the front here, you got to just really look for those headlights and the grill and those are going to be your two main standout things another thing that usually will cause Grand Wagoneers to stand out is that you typically have a two-tone paint job so uh, this one being all black you don't see that but on any other color you're going to see a black roof and uh, then you'll just have you know obviously the sides painted whatever color you choose so that is another easy way to pick out a Grand Wagoneer if it's not black um, you also have unique wheels here of course and then coming down to the sides in the back that's where it's much more obvious you're talking about a Grand Wagoneer Wagoneer because you'll see the very large badge denoting it as such. Um, there's no size differences between this and the regular Wagoneer. They're both about four inches longer than a comparable Tahoe or Escalade or the Expedition or Navigator. So this is a little bit bigger, but there is no long wheelbase version of this. So unlike what you can get with the Escalade and the Navigator with their long wheelbase versions, this you're going to be limited on cargo space unless you are willing to drop that third row. They haven't announced any kind of long wheelbase version of the Wagoneers yet. Yet. Hopefully that comes down the road for people who want the extra cargo space. But in the meantime, you know, you get a little bit more space than the regular wheelbase versions of the competitors. But, you know, you don't get quite as much as you do in those long wheelbase versions. And then out back here, um, again, it's fairly subtle aside from the enormous badging. So that is one thing you cannot miss. I mean, it's actually like raised block lettering here. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's hard to miss that. You also do have unique taillights. So once again, the lights are unique. You have a little bit more bright work around them as well um, but so it's a smokier kind of look here to them versus the more reddish taillights you get on a regular Wagoneer and then you also do have these badges down here so this one is for the trim this is a series two uh, so this is kind of like a mid-grade Grand Wagoneer and then you also have what kind of four-wheel drive system you have here you have the Quadra Drive 2 on all the Grand Wagoneers so they come standard with four-wheel drive that is one thing the Wagoneer is optional all-wheel drive standard rear-wheel drive but in the Grand Wagoneer you all get uh, four-wheel drive and all of these as well as getting the bigger engine which I'll talk about more once we hit the road but that's about it as far as the exterior changes so you know it is definitely more subtle and when you compare a Tahoe to an Escalade or an Expedition to a Navigator which are completely different looks this still is very much the same as a regular Wagoneer but you know it does have some nice touches there to help you stand out a little bit but I think some people may want it to you know stand out even a little bit more but um, I think you know regardless it still is a very handsome looking vehicle one other minor detail improvement i really appreciate is that on the wagoneers you only have proximity key sensors here on the front doors you didn't have them on the back doors which i thought was a strange cost cutting measure for a vehicle that even that wagoneer was eighty six thousand dollars that i was reviewing but here in the grand wagoneer you do get proximity here on the rear doors so you can walk up and immediately open the back doors here and presents these uh running boards for you without having to go up and touch the front door handle like you have to do in the wagoneer so uh from a convenience standpoint point um, if you know money isn't a big deal to you that alone I think is a huge convenience factor and a very nice feature here of the Grand Wagoneer. But moving on to the inside here in the Grand Wagoneer I'm not going to cover all the details of the interior because my wife and I already did a full in-depth interior review on the regular Wagoneer so I'm again just going to cover the differences here for the Grand Wagoneer. So what you'll 
first notice is that uh, you have the uh, seat adjustments here on the doors. On the regular Wagoneer, it's just down in the usual spot, and instead you have a Grand Wagoneer badge there. Um, so you have all the little adjustments. You have a two-part seat here, which is also unique. So you can adjust the top part and the bottom part separately, which is great. You also have a massage function here. The lights went away because it's a capacitive touch. But um, so it has that. You also have this nice wood trim, which you know feels pretty cool. There isn't any kind of grain to it, but it's you know really nice, genuine wood. Um, you'll also see there's a Macintosh badge there that will light up as well. And um, so this one has the standard Macintosh stereo um, that you get in Grand Wagoneers. There's an optional upgraded stereo. This one does not have, and I'll get into the specs of the stereo in a minute here. But otherwise, uh, these seats also have massage, and I'll show you how that works here in a second. Um, but really nice to have that in these. But then hopping up in here, you can see, of course, the unique steering wheel as well with the Grand Wagoneer badge, just a different badge and then the wood trim here on this is a little bit nicer. You also see this one has the active driving assist, um, which you don't get on all the regular Wagoneers, but you do get them here on the Grand Wagoneer as standard. We'll hop in, start it up, lots of screens here, that's one of the big features. So we'll start with the gauge cluster. So here in the Grand Wagoneers, it's a 12 inch screen versus a, like a 10.1 inch screen, I believe, in the regular Wagoneer. Um, and so nice to have you know, the extra screen real estate. Um, the graphics are also a little bit more unique and uh, you know, just it's kind of a, a little bit of a cooler design, I think, personally. And uh, so it has all the same kind of stuff, but this one also does have like night vision, for example, which is an optional package you can add on to the Grand Wagoneer. It's not standard. But that's a very cool thing. It will actually identify deer and help to automatically break quicker if it's you know it detects a deer in your path, things like that. Um, so it's great that it has that. You also have the typical assortment of just all the different um, you know ranges, temperatures, things like that. Trip info. It also does have a full blown map display here, which you know is kind of nice how it uh, subtracts the gauges a little bit smaller, so you can see a better view of the map. Really a nice you know, upgrade there to have a 12 inch screen. You also get another 12 inch screen over here. So typically this is a 10 inch screen on regular Wagoneers and there's no way to upgrade by the way. So if you want the bigger screen, you gotta go up to the Grand Wagoneer. That goes for both of these screens. Um, no way to get these screens in a regular Wagoneer. So that is a very nice upgrade as well. And uh, it's a pretty good screen. These touch buttons miraculously actually worked pretty well. Okay, see now it's not working very well. So it's very hit or miss um, with those buttons. That's one thing I don't love about this system. It also is pretty buggy. So it's saying I need to connect an Apple CarPlay device. My phone was connected. It worked twice, but then it hadn't worked the rest of the week here. It also, in the Wagoneer, didn't work at all with wireless CarPlay. So this system is definitely a little bit buggy. It's also a little bit annoying how sometimes, like, you know, if you click that, I mean, that even just took a while, but even if it didn't take a while, you can't just click this to go to the map. Like you have to click this tiny little thing up here and then that works the map. Otherwise, you know, again, you have these huge shortcuts down here. So not a big deal, but it just doesn't seem totally natural with the way everything's set up, but it's su super customizable. You can change all these little things down here to be whatever you want. Um, you also can uh, pre-save a bunch of your favorite little apps there. So if you want to pull up the fam cam, which for example is one thing that is unique here. It's an option you get here in the Grand Wagoneer. So this is one thing is the Grand Wagoneer does give you some nice new standard tech, but a lot of the stuff is that it just opens up options and unlocks options that you can then add on um, to make it, you know, a good bit nicer. But um, as standard, you know, you get some stuff like the bigger screens, but a lot of the stuff you still got to pay extra for even on a, you know, base Grand Wagoneer. So they're not fully loaded or anything like that. And amazingly, the wireless CarPlay has now started working again, <laughs> just for no reason at all. Didn't even turn the car off. It just like like randomly started to connect and we're good. So um, just so you can see how the wireless CarPlay looks here, you know, obviously it's on the full screen basically, but it still is nice to have the little um, shortcuts for the Wagoneer at the top there still. So you can still get to some of that pretty quickly. Um, and you know, of course you have all your apps and stuff. And so really nice that it's on this nice large display. Otherwise though, you have this other screen. You do not get this screen at all in the Wagoneer. This is just a little tray in a Wagoneer and it has a little lid over it. And this, it's this actual screen. It's a powered screen, by the way so you can hit the button and it will go away and reveal a wireless charging pad you know hook up and a bunch of uh, USB jacks auxiliary jack um, but then you press it and it comes right back down and it's very nice so as you can see that is primarily going to be your massage seat controls but you can also just change the seat and uh, climate controls things like that 
Um, so it's good to have that adjustment, but you have also most of those adjustments there on the door. So um, not a huge deal. So honestly, I think that's why most people probably leave this on the massage setting and that's it. Um, and lots of different massages. The massages work pretty well. Um, I've tried out the waterfall, the lower back. Um, they work pretty good. I, I'd say it's close to the top as far as, I guess, massages when you're not talking about a Mercedes or something. I think some of the Germans still do more advanced and better feeling massages. But as far as American brands go, I'd say this is towards the top of the pack and about as good as what you get in the Escalade as well. Though I have not tried the massage and the Navigate but uh, nice to have all that a few buttons down there and this is all the same kind of stuff it's all very nice with the trim and stuff and that's just as nice as what you're going to find on a regular Wagoneer the regular Wagoneer does have some really nice touches like all these metal switches and stuff so even a Wagoneer feels pretty premium but you do get the extra wood a little bit of extra stitching and of course it spells out Grand Wagoneer nice and large there. Now you will see there's no passenger display. Now a passenger display is an option both on a regular Wagoneer and a Grand Wagoneer. So that's not an exclusive thing with a Grand Wagoneer, but for like an extra 1200 bucks or something, you can get another screen there for the passenger to play with if you want. Um, you also do get a camera rear view mirror. That's another exclusive thing to the Grand Wagoneer. Also for this front bin, you can have this be a cooler if you'd like for this massive bin. Um, you can also get this optionally as a safe if you'd like in there. And so that's kind of a cool touch too, but that's shared with the Wagoneer. But for the Grand Wagoneer, this is the only one where you can actually get this as a cooler, which is a, another unique little touch. Another unique feature here of the Grand Wagoneer is that you get automated parking as standard. So that's what that little button is there. Another thing is that you get nicer leather on the Wagoneers. That's another thing about these seats is uh, the leather is Napa as standard. And I believe the regular Wagoneer, so, I mean, it has very nice leather seats. I lived with them for a week and there was no complaints. They were very comfortable, but this is a little bit of a higher quality uh, leather. And then when you go for the mid-grade trims, it's a Palermo leather, and then it's a quilted Palermo leather on the top trim. So even within the Grand Wagoneer, a of different uh, changes and you also see another series 2 badge there uh, to denote which Grand Wagoneer you bought um, but that's basically all the changes up front here the last thing to mention though is the stereo so like I said it's a Macintosh stereo in the regular Wagoneer and what this one is equipped with again being even a mid-grade Grand Wagoneer since I since this one did not get the uh, premium option package um, you don't get the more advanced Macintosh stereo so the standard Macintosh stereo is a 19 speaker uh, system with 950 watts of power as well as having a 10 inch subwoofer um, and it sounds very impressive I tested it for a full week in the Wagoneer I also tested it here in this it has really good immersion and power to it it sounds very very good uh, but I'd love to try out the uh, more advanced system but again that's part of the premium package only um, but that is 23 speakers it has a 12 inch subwoofer and has 1375 watts um, so that one sounds really impressive and that may actually give uh, the top Bose system in the Escalade a run for its money, but I have not tested it, so I can't say. But that Escalade stereo is still the stereo to beat in this segment for sure. It really blew me away with just how the immersion uh, that it had with the 3D surround sound system, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced in a car before. It was really crazy. So again, I wish I could tell you how the upgraded system is here in this one. Unfortunately, this is just the standard Macintosh. Still very good, um, but certainly not better than the uh, top system in the Escalade, at least. You also get a surround view camera as standard in the Grand Wagoneer, and that is something you do have to pay extra for in a Wagoneer. Um, and it's like the Wagoneer that I had as a press vehicle did not have this 360 camera. Again, on an $86,000 vehicle, no 360 camera. Thankfully, that is standard here in the Grand Wagoneers, you know, starting at 89,000. And moving on to the back seat here. This one has the optional captain's chairs. You can still get a bench in this uh, second row so that you can have a true eight-seater configuration here in the Grand Wagoneer, just like the regular Wagoneer. Um, but the really the main thing here that you get over a Wagoneer is you get this really cool extra screen here for the rear passengers. And you can see the, heat, the seat controls are in here. Also, you can optionally get cooled seats in a Grand Wagoneer, which you can't get in the regular Wagoneer, so you would have that here as well. But this one, again, does not have that option package. Uh, but still cool to have that screen here. It's also really nice that you get the uh, sunshades here, which I don't believe you got in the Wagoneer. So great that you have those uh, if you have little ones in the back. And uh, you can also get a rear entertainment package. This one does not have it, but that would also um, obviously give you uh, a little bit of a higher end feel here. But that is still just an option on the Grand Wagoneer still does not come standard. But otherwise, yeah, that's the interior in the Grand Wagoneer. And those are all the differences. So let's hit the road and talk about the differences of how it drives. 
All right, so setting off in the Grand Wagoneer. So the main thing to know about with the driving experience is you get the bigger 6.4 liter Hemi V8 engine instead of the 5.7 liter Hemi of the regular Wagoneer. And I think that the bigger engine really improves the experience here in the Grand Wagoneer. And honestly, I feel like that might again be worth the upcharge just for the engine alone because what I've noticed in my week with the Grand Wagon here versus my week with the regular wagon here is there's a lot less gear hunting they both run the same 8-speed automatic transmission but with the 5.7 and the regular wagon here um, even though they are maybe one or two hundred pounds lighter than the Grand Wagon here it still was like feeling like that V8 was working a lot harder in the wagon here and so it was really shifting around a lot and there was some times where I was waiting for a downshift because it was kind of delayed and I was like needing to climb a hill and I was like why is it not downshifting and then it downshifted there was none of that waiting around here in this partially because i think the engine just kind of covers any kind of lag the transmission would have because it's just you have the extra power so it just needs to shift less you have extra torque to pull you through the power is a huge improvement too so you have about 80 more horsepower it's 471 horsepower here in the grand wagon here and 455 pound feet of torque which is about 50 more pound feet of torque and so it really helps you i mean zero to 60 time has dropped by more than two seconds so it was like a seven and a half seconds over to 64 of the regular wagon here this is 5.4 seconds which is means this thing will keep up with a lot of you know affordable sports cars and stuff it's very strong performance we'll do an acceleration here in a minute but um you just you know when you're cruising around you'll just notice that having that extra power is really nice in a vehicle it's as heavy as this is which i mean this thing is heavy by the way these still weigh over 6400 pounds so it's heavy i mean obviously it's enormous and so that it's very par for the course with this segment but um you know so when you're talking about something that heavy I feel like you're gonna want the biggest V8 possible. Um, you know, I know with the Lincoln and the uh, Navigator, you know, they just give you a twin turbo V6, which is still sufficient and still very strong power. Similar performance numbers to this here, but I think there's a good reason why this runs that huge V8 and why, you know, the Escalade runs a huge V8 as well, because it certainly is nice. Yeah, I think that honestly, if you can afford it, I mean, obviously it's the Grand Wagoneer is gonna be nicer in every single way. So if you can afford it, duh, go for the nicer one. Um, I don't think there's money wasted by going for the Grand Wagoneer at all. But, you know, I think you have a better driving experience with the V8, and that's a, you know, a huge perk and worth paying that extra money for, along with a much nicer interior. And uh, you also get an air suspension as standard here in the Grand Wagoneer. So you can get an air suspension in the regular Wagoneer. I did uh, test that out in the Wagoneer I had last week. Um, and so, you know, as far as ride quality goes, they're going to be pretty similar between this and the Grand Wagoneer. Um, I haven't felt any kind of ride difference is honestly between the two um, they're both very smooth very comfortable very appropriate for a body on frame vehicle that does have you know an independent rear suspension and stuff so this goes even one step further than like what you got on a ram which i think of the ram 1500 is the smoothest riding truck in its segment but they even took that one step further with you know not only the air suspension but also again having independent rear suspension there as well so that you have you know better third row space and all that but so no complaints with the ride. Not like anyone was expecting this thing to ride badly, but it rides very nicely. And But the, I just want to highlight that's one thing between the Grand Wagoneer and the regular Wagoneer, you're probably not going to notice much of a difference if you go for the optional air suspension in the Wagoneer. But believe it or not, the Grand Wagoneer does have a sport mode. So you can go into the drive mode, switch here. It also does have rock, sand, snow, all that kind of stuff. But I'm in the sport mode. It does actually lower the suspension. So you'll have slightly better handling in that sport mode as well. But let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it accelerates here we go <laughs> wow yeah this thing takes off Woo! see you later <laughs> man it is a strong amount of power yeah that is uh another reason like i said i love having the nice big engines in these things but one thing to say about the power is that although you have a lot more grunt interestingly you have the same tow rating between the regular wagoneer and the grand wagoneer so they both tow 10,000 pounds which is great for wagoneer buyers uh, but it just means that even though you have this bigger engine you don't really get any extra towing capability here obviously i think it'll be a little bit easier to tow 10,000 pounds in this with the extra power but it's just that they both will do it as far as the tow rating goes so one other little thing to note there Merging out of the highway is extremely easy here with this nice large engine as well. And uh, that's another thing that I noticed is out on the highway here, both the Wagoneer and the Gra Grand Wagoneer are very smooth, very refined, and very luxurious. You know, nice and quiet, 
for this segment of vehicle, I'd say that you know it does fall right in line with what you get with like an Escalade or a Navigator or something like that. Again, it's been a little while since I've driven both of those, so I'd have to compare them back to back to really truly say. But you know, I'd say it's it's very appropriate for this segment, and you know it does a really good job. It's a great highway cruiser. So um, one thing that I didn't get to test out in the regular Wagoneer because the one that I had did not have the active driving assist. This has the active driving assist, which will actually give you um, basically like a you know steer a hands-on steering assist system. They are saying that uh, the Grand Wagoneers will be able to get a truly hands-free system that's coming late availability for this model year, so probably sometime in 2022. So as of right now, it is still just a normal adaptive cruise control system that does do the lane centering for you here. And I really like the way that Jeep has set up their lane centering system here, though, because you know it does do very active steering. It has done a really good job of keeping track of the road lines. And what I love about their system is when it loses track of the road lines, it lets you know very clearly. So, um, you know, if you are getting close to the lines, you still have the lane departure warning, which will vibrate the steering wheel to let you know it's not an annoying bunch of beeps or anything. It just, you know, gives the vibration there, but it also will take up the entire display to tell you when it's lost track of the road lines. And this is something like Genesis, for example, um, is a lot more subtle. There's just a tiny little green steering wheel icon, and if that goes away, you lose uh, your steering assist. Um, and you kind of, if you're not staring into the gauge cluster, there's a lot of times where I was like surprised with that vehicle. In this, there's no guessing games. And so it has allowed me to relax whenever I did a highway cruise. I was driving for about 55 or 60 miles on the highway yesterday, and I was able to truly relax with the system because I knew that it would notify me the second that it was having trouble. Like I was going around a very tight corner on the highway, and it just straight up told me I can't do this turn, and it told me to take over control again. I mean, I'm still having control the whole time, but it's, it's telling you, you know, make sure you know you need to steer more actively um, because, you know, yes, I'm, you know, maybe still doing a little bit of steering here and there with this hands-on system, but it's doing most of that steering and those micro corrections for me. And so having that very clear heads up that, hey, you need to, you know, start doing all those things yourself again is nice to have. And so whenever it is actually working, I can trust that it's working very well. It hasn't let me down. It's not something I need to babysit really. It just does its job the way it's supposed to very well done with this system. Now Lincoln is also working on a hands-free system that's supposedly arriving for the 2022 Navigators. Those aren't out yet, so I don't have a chance to review that yet, to, you know, hopefully eventually I will. But it is also worth noting that until there is a truly hands-free system, Cadillac still has the um, one up on the Wagoneer here and the Grand Wagoneer because with the you know Escalade, you have the fantastic, truly hands-free Super Cruise system, and in the Escalade is the 2.0 system, so it will do automated lane changes. It's a very intelligent, very reliable, very good, actual, truly hands-free driving assist system. And so if you do a lot of highway miles, I still have to recommend an Escalade over the Wagoneer here, just because you wouldn't, unless you've experienced it already, you, you wouldn't really understand just how much more luxurious it is to not have your hands on the wheel. To truly be able to have your hands sitting on your lap and ready to take over, but you know, you can actually not steer in the Escalade. And that is so luxurious on a longer road trip to you know not have to have your hands up here working the whole time and just be resting them. And um, it's, it's really a game changer uh, from a road trip standpoint. So Escalade is still the king in my book. The Grand Wagoneer, you know, once it has a truly hands-free system, could very well, you know, be neck and neck with that Escalade. But yeah, a very nice cruiser. And the adaptive cruise system also works very well. So it's still a very nice vehicle. We're truly talking about first world problems. But when you're spending over $100,000, you probably want the best. And I just have to say that I still think that the Escalade is the best, at least on the highway. So the last two things here to mention about the Grand Wagoneer are the fuel economy and the pricing. Fuel economy is gonna be pretty similar, you know, even though you have a bigger engine here in this, you're still just dealing with an enormous vehicle. It doesn't have great aerodynamics and is very heavy. Um, so, and I also did a different type of driving. I did a lot more highway driving in this over the regular Wagoneer. And as a result, I'm actually seeing slightly better fuel economy in this than my around town driving in the regular Wagoneer. So over my 81 miles of driving here, I've done 14 miles per gallon exactly. I was seeing as high as I believe about 15 or so um, whenever I was doing straight highway driving originally. 
Um, now these are rated at 13 miles per gallon in the city and 18 on the highway and 15 combined. So very low, but also appropriate for this segment of vehicle. They're all gonna get terrible fuel economy. The Lincoln might do a little bit better with this twin turbo V6, but even that thing, you know, if you start using that boost, you could potentially get even worse fuel economy because turbos really love to suck down gas. So honestly, you know, it is what it is. If you're buying a vehicle this big, you just have to deal with that until, you know, we get some truly electrified options out there that improve that. Um, and one other last little thing, speaking of fuel economy, is that you don't get the e-torque system in the 6.4 liter version of the Grand Wagoneer. Regular Wagoneer does get the e-torque as standard, and so that means you will have the start-stop capability, and so that will help you to save a little bit of gas, you know, with stopping and starting if you leave the system on. There is no stop-start system whatsoever in the Grand Wagoneer. But you also in the smaller V8 of the regular Wagoneer, it's gonna be working harder to move that enormous beast. So, you know, I think that the fuel economy is gonna almost be a wash. It will depend on your circumstances and, you know, how you drive and stuff. But, you know, they're all gonna get low fuel economy. So when you're at fuel economy this low, one or two MPG is going to make or break your experience probably. So just wanted to mention that. The last thing though is pricing here in the Grand Wagoneer. And I think that they've priced it very well. Now, compared to the regular Wagoneer, they supposedly start at around 60,000, although as of right now, and I'm filming this in uh, November of 2021, um, you can only get um, the Series 2 Wagoneer, and so those are like 69,000. So as of right now, the price difference here is about $20,000 starting price versus starting price between the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. That eventually will again widen to about 30,000. It's a very similar experience, like I said, the ride's very similar. You still get a V8 in both vehicles. You still get a lot of tech. It's just the tech is better here in this. You have the better experience with the bigger V8. So, you know, it's going to come down to, you know, how badly you want all these extra toys as far as whether it's worth that upcharge, because it is a large upcharge. But, you know, I think that um, if you have the money, it is certainly worth paying extra for all the nice upgrades. And as far as how this compares to its competitors, it also is priced very well. Because again, since you have that extra four inches of length here over a regular wheelbase version of the Escalade and the Navigator, you know, that is going to mean that you're going to have, you know, a little bit more space for the money. And these are basically almost identical in pricing to the short wheelbase Escalade and Navigator. Navigator, depending on how you option it up, it can be a little bit cheaper than this when it's comparably equipped. So it just comes down to whether or not you want the nicer setup of the black label in the Lincoln. If you're okay going without that, you can still get most of the same features as this. There are some exclusive features you can't get in the Escalade or the Navigator, for example, like the fam cam here where you have the ability to see you know, the back seat and all that kind of stuff. That is all here unique to this. There's a lot of other unique things. You get you know really big screens here. The Lincoln is upgrading its screen for uh, 2022 as well, but it's still not as big as this. The Cadillac has a screen that's narrower, but it is technically larger from a measurement standpoint. That's a 38 inch screen because it's combining the gauges and the infotainment. But I'd say that this generally has a little bit more screen real estate than those do. And so this one as tested, by the way, is about $101,000. If you were to get that premium package to get the better uh, Macintosh stereo, and then you were to get uh, you know the passenger display, the rear entertainment package, all that kind of stuff, you could see these go to about 110. Again, it all comes down to the options and stuff, but if you do a comparably equipped Escalator Navigator, you are going to come out you know very, very similar in pricing. And so again, with the slight improvement in space, I'd say that this is probably, from a value standpoint, probably a little bit better than the Escalade and the Navigator. But again, if you want the long wheelbase versions, um, you can get that in the Escalade and the Navigator. You cannot get that here in this. So that is, you know, one thing you're really missing out on. And again, that Super Cruise system is super nice in the Escalade. The stereo in the Escalade is really, really nice. And so for those two reasons, I still think that overall, I would take an Escalade over this, but it is very close. I certainly would take this over a Navigator because the Navigator has a lot less impressive stereo, way less speakers. Um, it's just not as impressive, I think. You know, I think the Navigator is really nice and they have some nice improvements for 2022 as well. But I'd say this is nicer than that. But you can't go wrong with either one. They're both very nice driving, very sweet, very luxurious vehicles here in this ultimate SUV segment here that we're dealing with these days. It's very, very crazy to have these rolling palaces of 
tech and luxury and power and just tons and tons of space. But anyway, hopefully this video has helped you to figure out all the differences between the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. I know even I was a little bit confused trying to figure out all the differences and it took me a while to actually compile all this for this video. So hopefully this video helped you. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, definitely click the subscribe button. And thanks to Jeep for providing me here with the Grand Wagoneer to review for you guys today. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.